Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler and what an honor and a privilege it is to be with you on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. Well, I'm excited today. Hopefully you can tell. I believe that as believers in Christ, we should not walk around with our heads hanging low, looking like we just ate something sour, but we should experience the life that God has chosen for us by faith, but we also, we also should experience it in our life, and it also should show on our face. Well, I am excited for one reason today. This is the very first broadcast of the good news of a life without fear. As I've been sharing the last few weeks, the Lord has led my wife, Adis, and I to leave our previous assignment as pastors at Voice for Jesus Church and move into a new ministry that really is not a new ministry at all. Back in 2004, the Lord spoke to us a scripture, and out of that scripture, he birthed a vision within our hearts for a new ministry. And the name of that ministry is Faith is the Victory Fellowship. The scripture that it uh, is based in and rooted in is found in 1 John 5, 4, and this is what it says. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Did you know that the faith that God has put within every believer is more than enough to overcome every challenge, every circumstance, and every problem. Let me say that again because it's just so good and it is so true. The faith that God has put within you, if you are a believer in Christ, is more than enough to overcome every challenge, navigate your life through every circumstance, no matter how difficult it may appear, no matter what challenge, difficulty, or problem, it is more than enough. I have found that God is a more than enough God. <laughs> I have found that it, he is truly the Ephesians 3.20 God. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above and beyond, all that you would ever think, dream, or imagine. Think about that for a moment. Some of you watching today, you have a big dream. You have a big desire. Your passion for what you're believing God for is something that is beyond what you can pay for, what you can personally sustain, but it is given by God. I, I taught uh, yesterday on uh, the, the fact that delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. And that word delight, as I've talked about frequently, means to make yourself moldable, pliable, and shapeable. How do we do that? We do that by humbling ourselves. God, I need you. I need you for the very air that I breathe. I need you for every step that I take. I need your grace. I need your love. I need your mercy. I need your strength. I need even your faith. Now, going back to 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Now, let me clarify something. It's really not our faith. Oh, it is ours in that it is housed and contained within our spirit. Oh, it is ours in that we benefit from it. Oh, it is ours in that it is ours to decide how we will use, or should I say, how much of it we should use. But the truth is, Paul said, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, it is not I that lives, but it is Christ that lives in me. And the life that I now live, subsequent 
to my conversion. The life that I now live, I live, watch this, by the faith of the Son of the living God. You see, even the faith, watch this now, even the faith that you and I use to take the Word of God, take the promises of God's Word, and apply them to our lives so that we will be the benefactor and ultimately taking the benefit that we receive and giving it back to God. Even the faith that we say is our faith, it is really, <laughs> it is really God's faith. Ah, my friend, he's got you covered. Come on, the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. That means wall to wall, God has spilled over his blood. Now, to some that don't understand, that may seem so gruesome. But the word says that the life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. What kind of life? Eternal life, powerful life. A Zoe life, anointed life, empowered life. Ah, some may call it a bloody religion, but it's a religion through relationship of what Christ has done. And as he said on the cross, it is finished. You see, God's not coming off of the throne through his son when we call on him. When we say, Jesus, I need your help, he doesn't turn to the Father and say, Father, just one moment. I need to go down there because Bob needs some help. No, he's resting. The only action that's taking place is that he's interceding for you and I. Now, I wonder what that prayer of intercession must be. I believe, if not most, but a big majority of what he's praying and interceding is let them believe. Let them use the faith that I have given them. Let them tap in and yield and allow the power of the Holy Spirit to equip them, to speak to them, to lead them. And you know what happens when we live that kind of life? We experience the good news of a life without fear. Oh, it doesn't mean that fear won't try or attempt to rear its ugly head, to latch on and not only control us, but influence us, cause us to tremble. How does that happen? Sometimes it may happen during the nighttime. You may wake up after a vivid dream and the dream does not subside when your eyelids open up. It begins to influence you, infiltrate your thoughts. What do you have to do? You have to take authority in the authority that God has given you and speak to it. Bring it under subjection. Make it come under the authority of Jesus Christ and then pick up the promise of God. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad in it. Well, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, in the title of this message today, I felt it appropriate to entitle the very first program of Faith is the Victory Fellowship right here on Facebook, and you heard it first, The Good News of a Life Without Fear, which is the name of this particular broadcast under the name of the ministry. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, we find these words, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Now think of this for a moment. Go back to when you first received Christ. Go back to when your relationship with God first began and you experienced that conversion experience. Now, it happens differently for all of us. Some, maybe it was accompanied with tears. For others, maybe it was a very critical moment in your life, in a moment of crises. Maybe 
you were thinking of suicide. Maybe life had just pinned you down and you had no other option than to call upon the name of the Lord. And the word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Isn't it something that somebody can be converted by just saying the name of Jesus from a heart that says, you're my only option. You're my only recourse. You're the only one that I can, everyone else has turned their back on me, whether because of choices you've made or whether that's just the hand that it appeared that life had dealt to you. But you called upon the name of the Lord and immediately salvation came to your life. Well, the word says here in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, that the seed that was put within you, of which you were born again by, that seed of faith is not only incorruptible, which means it cannot be touched, cannot be influenced, and it cannot be broken down, nor can it be diminished. Hallelujah. Come on. It's not like a car that eventually may experience some rust. Come on, the seed that you and I have been born again by is an everlasting, eternal seed. Amen. It's not corruptible and it cannot be tainted, nor can it be touched. And so as we begin to realize that the life that God has chosen for us is an incorruptible, an eternal, everlasting life that he has chosen for us, we begin to renew our mind to that truth. Now, you say, what does that have to do with the good news of a life without fear. Because fear is a spirit. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, we read these very popular words that we hear often in church. Oftentimes, they're a message that the minister will minister. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Can we sit in this scripture for just a moment? As I've said so often, and and I don't think that I can repeat it often enough, when we read the scripture, we need to take time, slow down, and absorb the power and the intent that the Holy Spirit meant when he instructed these men of God to pin down on paper what he was influencing and telling them to put on paper. For God has not given you a spirit of fear. Stop right there. Now, what does that mean? That means that as a believer, as a recipient of that incorruptible, everlasting, eternal seed, if God did not give you a spirit of fear, you do not have to have, you do not have to possess, you do not have to be influenced by a spirit of fear. You see, when you think for a moment The good news of a life without fear. You mean that I can live a life without fear? Yes, but understand this. That does not mean that you will not have to combat and stand against, speak against the spirit of fear. (laughs) Uh, You know, the devil is kind of stubborn and he works in deception. Hear me when I say this. The only way that Satan can influence you and control even the life of a believer is through one word, and that word is deception. You see, so often people will blow up, puff up, and empower Satan and make him something that he is not. Do you know that all authority and power has been removed from Satan by what Christ has done 
on the cross. You see, faith is the victory fellowship is rooted in the not only idea, but the truth and fact of the finished work of the cross. When Jesus was suspended on those beams, hanging between heaven and earth, he spoke these words, it is finished. We read in Colossians where he made a show of the enemy openly. He took authority from powers and principalities, meaning that right now, There's not a spirit that has power or authority. Satan himself does not have power or authority. Now, some would say, then how is he accomplishing so much? Because believers, talking specifically in the life of a believer, be through ignorance, not understanding who they are in Christ, they literally yield the authority that they've been given by God to Satan, and he takes the authority that God has given to us in that incorruptible, infallible, eternal seed that was born within us. A believer can yield through ignorance the authority that they've been given by God to Satan himself. And then he uses that authority to deceive a believer. You see, if you don't thoroughly, if you are not thoroughly convinced and understand who you are in Christ and the authority that he has given to you, you can be deceived. And it's in that deception You know, it's like when Satan came to Eve, did God really say, how many times in your life has a lying spirit said, did God really mean what he said to you? Did did you really see in that dream and in that vision what you say that you saw? You see, he brings doubt. And through unbelief, we empower him to put a stranglehold on the promise that God has made to you. And the challenge today is to remind ourselves of that eternal, incorruptible, infallible seed that God has birthed within us and remind ourselves who we are. Who are we? Ah, we're the beloved. We are the bride of Christ. We are the anointed. We are dripping with the favor of God. We've been empowered by the Holy Spirit. We have have been chosen for such a time as this. Ah, as I say these words, I sense the power and the presence of God, and I pray that you do as well. Because when you remind yourself of who you are, whose you are, and the purpose in which God has birthed you in the earth today, you will be reminded that there is a destiny that God has chosen for you and that you are not going to yield the power and the authority that God has given to you to use for God's purposes, not for Satan's purpose. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. That means if God didn't give it to us, simply put, we do not have to be influenced by a spirit of fear. But it doesn't stop there. But a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Do you know that not only does God want you to realize your authority in him, but he wants you to walk in his love, but he also wants you to have a sound mind. Do you know the word of God declares that fear has torment? Do you know if when we when we do not walk in the promises of God's word, soaking and marinating our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions in, 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 in who we are in the Spirit already and what the Word declares over our lives. Do you know that when we lose sight of who we already are in Christ, do you know that our mind 
can give way not to peace, not to God's love, not to any of the benefits of what we have received already through what Christ has done. But do you know that even in the life of a believer, there can be torment? How? Because fear produces torment. And my friend, I want to encourage you today, if you're a child of God, you do not have to live a life of fear. Your life does not have to be influenced by fear. You don't have to be tormented. You don't have to be uh, swayed by the persuasion of the enemy of your soul. Do you know that you can experience joy walk in the life that God has chosen for you and experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. You say, Bob, that thought, that idea seems so far away from me. Well, on this first broadcast, let me ask you a question. Do you know Christ today? If you were to die at this very moment, and I wouldn't wish that on anybody today, You see, my desire today is the same as what God's desire is for you, that you would live a life of joy and a life of peace and discover the fulfilling life that God has intended for you as a believer. But do you know God through what Christ has done? If you don't, as I said at the beginning of this program, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, Jesus shall be saved. You say, it can't be that simple. Oh, my friend, it came at a great cost, at a great price. It required God sending his only son into the earth because of his great love for you and living not only a life for 33 and a half years, but ultimately being led to God's intended purpose. Why? Because of his love for you. Sending his only begotten son laying his life down on the cross, being raised on the third day, and now sitting on the right hand of the throne of God, ever living to make intercession for you. I want to ask you today, if you don't know the Lord, if you know, and you, one thing I have found is there's no wiggle room. It doesn't come through going to church. It doesn't come through acting religious. It comes through giving your life over to God and receiving his payment plan in full for your eternal salvation. And if I'm speaking to you today and you say, I don't have that peace, I don't know that type of relationship. My life may even be religious, but I don't know that life that you've been talking about today. Well, if that's you, you can experience it right now. Would you pray with me? Would you just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I recognize that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And today, by faith, I call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus, would you come into my life? Would you forgive me of my sin? I receive, by faith, the faith that you have already put within me, I receive your payment in full, not only for my sin, but for the relationship that you desire to have with me through your precious blood. I receive it now, and I thank you that by faith I am saved, I am forgiven, I am washed, I am clean, the past is gone, and as your word declares, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, all things, all things have become new. All things have become new. And right now, I am saved. My friend, if you prayed that prayer today, guess what? Today is your new birthday. You have been born again, and your best life is not behind you, but your best life is now in front of you. Praise the Lord. We celebrate with you if you prayed that prayer today. The Bible says that when one person, think of this, when one person comes to know the Lord, 
all of heaven rejoices. Guess what's happening right now in heaven? There is a celebration going on and they're calling your name and they're saying, guess what? Jim, Joe, Susie, Sally, Maria, whoever has received God's payment plan through Christ and now they are born again. Did you know that all of heaven right now is rejoicing because of you. Praise the Lord. That is exciting to me. Nothing more beautiful, nothing more more miraculous than when one person comes into a relationship with God and as Jesus said, is born again. Well, as I said today, we have ventured out by the leading of the Holy Spirit into a new ministry and the ministry is called Faith is the Victory Fellowship. We have stepped out by faith in obedience to what God has called us to do. And so now I would like to share with you an opportunity for you to partner with us, firstly, in prayer. Oh, the difference prayer makes. I would ask you that not only would you pray for myself and my wife, Adis, as we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, but pray for the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. There is, as I said, prayer changes things. It brings the invisible into the visible realm. Secondly, I would like to invite you to partner with us. You say, how can we partner with you? Well, you can partner with us financially, and I have two ways that you can do that. The first is, for some of us that are a little bit older, this is a little bit different, but you can actually text to give. Now, Most of us are familiar with texting. We text our family, our friends. We send them prayer requests, well wishes, Christmas. Some of us don't even send birthday cards or Christmas cards anymore. We just find a beautiful application and we text it. Well, guess what? You can also contribute financially through texting. And this is how you do it. You simply text to, and this is where you would text to, 84321. Now, let me give you a moment to write that down. Instead of putting the person's name that you would send a text to, you simply put in the address of your text, 84321. You put those numbers, 84321. And then on the line that you would text out your message, you simply put in the dollar amount. If it's $5, 5.00 in the memo line of your text. So whatever the amount, you would text it to 84321. Then on the message line, just simply put the amount that you would like to give. Prayerfully, it's $10, 20 whatever it would be. It will be used all to sustain and to move forward into the ministry that God has called us to. What's going to happen? You're going to send that text, and then you're going to receive a message from church planning. And that is the company that we're using for online giving. If you've never used the app before, it's going to it's a very simple process. You're going to look for Faith is the Victory Fellowship. And then it's going to lead you to a one time just filling out a form. It's very brief and then you will you will indicate the amount that you want to give and you even have the opportunity to waive or cover the the very small charge that uh, church planning charges us and all of what you give will go directly into the ministry of faith is the victory fellowship uh, there also is um Another opportunity, we've all, most of us have downloaded apps before. You can go into your, to your app store and you're going to download the Church Center app. That's Church 
Center app. And once you download it, you can look for Faith is the Victory Fellowship and then do exactly the same that I just mentioned. Hey, we want to express our gratitude and appreciation for anyone who feels the leading to become maybe a one-time giving experience for you, but prayerfully, God will touch your heart to become a monthly supporter of the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. We want to encourage you to open your heart, spend some time in prayer before you do any of what I just ask you to do, before you give anything. I believe that God still speaks to us. And I know that God has birthed this ministry, not just today, but in all truth, this ministry was first birthed in 2004. <laughs> uh, when God gives something, as I went back, as I go back and I remind you of the scripture that I read at the beginning of the service today, it is an incorruptible, eternal seed. My friend, if God spoke something to you years ago and you're waiting on it, and maybe there's been a, a, a season to where it seems that it has gone underground, can I tell you that God has not forgotten the promise that he's made to you? He is not a man that he would lie to you. If he spoke it to you, it's just as real, just as alive as it was the day that he first promised it to you. Well, I look forward to the days, weeks, months, and years that we will spend together. I'm excited at what God is going to lead us into as we begin this new ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. I do also want to let you know that we do have content not only here on Facebook, but also we have a YouTube channel that eventually we will be broadcasting these programs simultaneously on our Faith is the Victory YouTube channel. You may want to go there. I have a few videos that I've already posted, but there will be much, much more to come. Hey, I love you. God loves you. And as always, my friend, until we're back together right here on Faith is the Victory Fellowship Facebook, I want to remind you of one thing. He is faithful. God bless you.